All right, go core immobilizers. This is my attempt to uh, give you an example of what the uh, info session is going to look like, although we're not presenting as an info session. Still working on a name. I'm thinking um, your place in God's work or your place in the rhythm of God or the rhythm, rhythm of God and our work, something like that. Um, there's lots of noise happening around me. People doing construction outside my office, so you might hear some banging at some point. And um, this is the first time I've done this out loud, so it could sound kind of rough, but it'll give you an idea of the direction and what it sounds like. So um, you'll start the session, and you'll welcome them, tell them a little bit about yourself, um, and then give the GoCor line, which is... Um, GoCor helps you find your place in God's global work. And so I'm excited that you're here today and that I get to tell you a little bit about GoCor and uh, what we do. And then and more, and more purposely, we're going to talk about who God is and what God is doing around the world and what's our place um, in that. And so here's a video just uh, telling you a little bit about GoCor uh, that will help us get us started. So you'll play the um, video um, that we, the new video that we have, when that video closes, um, you'll instruct them to do this. Say, I, I want you to follow my lead on this, okay? And then you just start with a slow clap. Right? And then say, now, follow my lead on this. You know, do something weird, like something that they can't follow, right? Be silly with and uh, then you'll say something that sounds like this. Um, we all live our lives in a certain rhythm, right? Rhythms that we can follow, rhythms that are easy. And though at times it can seem chaotic and feel like we're just going from one thing to another, we all find a rhythm that we like, that we're comfortable with, and we stick to that rhythm. In the same way, God has a rhythm. And a lot of times we miss that rhythm, that from Genesis to Revelation, you can see his rhythm as he interacts with the world and with his people. The question that we're going to ask in this session, that we're going to have to ask ourselves is, does our rhythm, the rhythm in which we live our lives, match God's rhythm? It's an important question, especially when you know what God's rhythm is. So, what is God's rhythm? Finish this verse. Be still. They say, I know, I know, God. What's the rest of the verse? I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in all the earth. That from Genesis to Revelation, there are stories and scriptures that we know, that we've heard uh, since we became a Christian. That, that there's these truths that are in them. That God loves us. That God cares for us. That God will protect us. God knows everything that will happen in the future. There are all these truths that we know. But if you look really closely at a lot of these stories and scriptures, there's a bigger story happening, right? That we know God's rhythm is love. We know that God's rhythm is hope. We know that God's rhythm is protection, right? That he cares for us. We know those rhythms. But the big rhythm that a lot of times we miss is that God loves the nations. God cares for the nations. God wants to bring hope to the nations. I will be exalted among the earth. I will be exalted in the earth. And these examples are littered throughout um, throughout the Old and New Testament. Here's just a few examples. The Ten Commandments, what are they about? Yeah, it gives us rules to follow. It gives us a way to look like God, but why? Well, it says, observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to who? To the nations. What about King Solomon, right? He had the most wisdom of anyone who's ever existed. Why did God give him that wisdom? 1 Kings 4.34, so that men of all nations could come to listen to, him, to Solomon's wisdom, sent by all the kings of the world. 
men of all nations. People from all nations were coming to hear of King Solomon's wisdom. What about the famous story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Thrown into the fiery furnace. That's a great story, right? We've got veggie tales about it. It's a story of God's love, of, of bravery, of fearlessness. But what's this story about? These men are thrown into a fiery furnace. Why? So that a foreign nation would worship God. Uh, it says in Daniel, it says, Therefore I, Nebuchadnezzar, decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces, for no other God can save in this way. So the main rhythm of that story is God's desire for this nation, this foreign nation, to worship him. What about Daniel and the lion's den? Another famous children's story, really. A story of love and bravery. I, Darius, he says this to Daniel, I, Darius, issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. There's a bigger story happening. And this goes all throughout the Old Testament. And then you get into the New Testament, right? What missions verse do you think of when you think of the New Testament, or really when you think of the Bible? You think of Matthew 28, right? The Great Commission. But it goes so much deeper than that. Mark 16, 15, Jesus says, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Matthew 24, 14, right? When's the end going to come? When's Jesus going to come back? Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. The book of Acts, right, the testimony of this great movement of God, of spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth, it begins with Jesus echoing the Great Commission. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Paul saw God's rhythm. He knew God's rhythm. He said, I have made it my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ is not yet known, so that I wouldn't build on another man's foundation. And then you can go into Revelation, calling for the day that all nations, all tribes will be brought to him to worship under his throne. The end goal of everything is that every tribe, tongue, and people would be represented at the throne. That's the end goal. So from Genesis to Revelation, if you really look at it, you see a rhythm of God's heart for his world and his people. So here's the question. If that's the rhythm of God, do I have that same rhythm? Let's just ask you gently. If, if that's the rhythm of God, if that's who God is, do Christians today have that same rhythm? So we're going to play a little true-false game, okay? I'm going to read a statement about the current state of missions, and you're going to tell me if it's true or false. Ready? In 100 AD, the worldwide ratio of unbelievers to believers was 360 to 1. Today, one out of every 14 people are evangel evangelical Christians. It's true. There are more evangelicals in Africa than in all of North America and Europe combined. It's true. Many Muslims around the world are having dreams and visions of Jesus Christ. That's true. Between 85 and 95 percent of all believers who are serving as cross-cultural goers serve in already reached areas. It's true. More than 30 percent of the world's 6,900 plus languages need a written translation of the Bible. That's true. There are more than 2.9 billion people in the world who have little or no access to the gospel. This is what we would call an unreached person, meaning there is no Christian around them, no missionary around them, no church they can go to. No way for them to hear the gospel. 2.9 billion people. That's true. About one-third of the world call themselves Christians. One-third are non-believing, living in reached people group areas. And one-third of the world's population live in unreached people groups. 
It's true. There's a way that um, I was taught to remember the peoples of the world. What makes up this world? What makes up the religions of this world? And it's an acronym um, called THUM. So tribal, Hindu, unreligious, Muslim, Buddhist. It's an easy way to remember what makes up this world. If God's rhythm is loving the world, who is that world? And it's pretty daunting when you think about where we are with them. Uh, for tribal, there are six cross-cultural workers for every one million tribal people. Think about that. For Hindus, there are two workers for every one million Hindus. Unreligious, 12 workers for every one million. Muslim, six workers for every one million. And Buddhist, 13 workers for every one million Buddhists. It's estimated that only 3% of foreign missionaries today are working to reach unreached peoples. The other 97% are working in unevangelized but not unreached areas. Of all the money designated for missions in the U.S., only 5% is used for foreign missions. And according to the World Christian Encyclopedia, of that 5.4%, only 1% is used to, to take the gospel to unreached peoples who don't have access to the gospel. That is about one cent out of every $100 given to missions. In light of this, seeing God's rhythm, seeing the needs that are still there. We believe the world needs a new kind of missionary. We need a new way to think about this. And 20-somethings are uniquely positioned to fill that gap. If you're like me, you, I was wired to think of missionary as a certain way. Uh, Go where we have a name for it. We call it the astronaut syndrome. Okay. Um, I remember when I was 16, I was a brand new Christian. I'd just been saved within the last year. I'm sitting in my first Baptist church of Quorum, small church. And uh, on the screen were these pictures of these missionaries that would go through. There's about three or four different missionaries that our church sponsored. And I remember hearing about what a missionary was, seeing the pictures, seeing their families, um, hearing about all the degrees they had. <laughs> And uh, I would, I remember thinking, oh, that's really cool, but I'll never do that. Like, I'm really glad for them, but that's not me. And I feel like it's a lot of our 20-somethings, is that you hear the stories of missionaries, you meet a missionary, you hear about what a missionary does, what, a, what's, what someone's doing right now, and you think, yeah, that's really cool, but that's probably... Not me. It's almost like saying, well, I could be an astronaut, but I probably won't. Right? And I want to challenge you. Maybe it's time to think of missions as something different. We need a new kind of missionaries. What if you could use your degree overseas and taking these first key mobile years to join the unfailing, joyful mission of God to bring the gospel to people from people from every tribe and nation. That when you can connect your passions and your skills with God's work in the, in the earth, you get to be a part of a new rhythm. And that's what we want to help you with, with GoCore. That we exist, we were created to help people like you who are mastering a skill, who are in a mobile time in your life, and connects you to God's global work. Our primary objective is to send goers, 20-somethings, um, post-grad, after they finish their degree, um, to use that degree over, overseas and connect your skills with a specific team around the world. One way, say, one way we say is our hope is to mobilize the most available, those who don't have a mortgage, who don't have um, kids um, who have this freedom, so to mobilize the most available to the least reach.
So the question that I want to directly ask you is, have you ever considered changing your rhythm and investing two years into God's global work in your life? Two years. That's a lot. Well, it's really not. If you look at this um, slide, it's really not. One way I like to say it um, is, did you go to junior high? Oh, you did? Cool. That was three years, and you survived that. So if you can survive that, you can survive two years overseas. Now, we believe two years is the sweet spot, long enough for you to learn a language, to get adapted to the culture, to make real friends, um, and for you really to see long-lasting relationships that have an eternal impact. And so we believe two years is the sweet spot. And um, we'll talk a little bit later, but you will have so much time to get married, and to build your career, whether that's overseas or here in the States. And this, is, this isn't, this is um, you know, I'm, I'm leaving one thing to go do this, and then I'll, a little side thing, and then I'll come back. No, this is something that builds your life. It builds your resume. It builds your, um, your kingdom sanctification. It builds um, your ability to learn, to lear work with people. You're learning a language. It gives you life skills. And so this isn't something that you're doing on the side. This is something that builds, that God will use to build your life. So one of the things that we do is we hope to remove barriers. Um, because as you start to think about it, even right now, if you're interested, there are barriers that keep in your mind. You think, well, I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of this. These things that get in the way. So our hope is to remove those barriers as much as we can so what are the barriers and how what are we doing to help you with that um one of the barriers for thinking about serving cross-culturally is over choice there are so many options so many different people telling you what to do and where to go um that sometimes you don't know where to start so go core you can think of us like expedia.com for missions um one of the things that we do is we partner with several different missions organizations we have one application and one place to look at every single opportunity so when you come to us, um, we give you access to all these opportunities from different missions organizations so that you don't have to go to each of them to find out info. You come to us, you fill out one application, and then we connect you with the team that fits you. It's a different way to look at it um, that's helpful for you that really shortens the process and makes it, and finds a better fit for you. And the other thing is loans. The majority of you probably have loans. So one thing that we offer is um, loan forgiveness, or debt assistance. Um, when you return from your time two years on the field, you will get $5,000 that will go towards your loans. Another barrier is a more theological um, one, but it's this idea of a missionary calling that you could sit here and say every single day until you graduate, well, God has it called me overseas. And I just want to pump the brakes on that. This is a much longer conversation. Um, he's called all of us. To be a part of his mission. For some of us, that's going. For some of us, that's sending. For some of us, that's mobilizing. For all of us, that's praying. Um, and so pump the brakes on saying, I'm called to do missions, because we're all called to do missions. For you, you just need to see, ask yourself, am I available and am I willing? Those are the two questions that you need to ask. And then the last barrier um, that we see a lot is that the process to get from here to there is just so long. With some organizations, it can take um, a year or more. With us, if you graduate in May, you can be on the field in the fall. So there's a six-month process. And so it's more uh, it's easier to transition from here to there. Our hope is to get you there um, equipped and to get you there quickly. Um, so we want to eliminate as many barriers as possible and we also want to connect you to the most strategic team um, as possible and so if you look at this slide um, here's some examples and stories of our teams that we have on the field we'll use that slide and then um, you can talk about you can highlight the teams you want to highlight at this point in the session um, and then we'll end by um, talking about change lives um, at the end of all this our hope is that lives are changed people that you encounter on the field, people that are on your team, and most importantly, your life. Um, we want you to grow professionally and spiritually. To be able to see God work in a new rhythm, in a new way, um, that, you, that you haven't seen him work before.
before. And so I want to end with this video. Um, it's a guy um, who served with GoCore a couple of years ago. His name is Aaron, and he served in Turkey. And uh, I think it would be helpful to see um, how he interacts with the world, with his team, and with God. Um, watch the video. Um, I want to end with this quote, and then I'll stick around after. There's a sign-up sheet for if you're interested. We'd love to start the conversation with you um, to see if GoCourt is, Go is a good fit for you, and I'll stick around after um, to answer any questions. Um, but I want to end with this quote from Steve Hawthorne. You can do something other than working with God in his purpose, but it will always be something lesser, and you couldn't come up with something better.